This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and if you tuned in earlier this week, you saw the design phase of Deathmobile 2, the under $100 DIY sim chassis or sim rig. But today, we're actually here to show you the actual build. Now, you can see it's already done, it's already here. And if you have six hours, you can watch the full length uncut version at Sim Pit Live on Twitch. Now, if that's a little too long or a little too tedious for you, right here on YouTube, we did the four hours it took to actually build the rig, condensed into two minutes, and you can watch that version. But if you wanna see all the steps involved, see how the build actually came along, see the adaptations or the changes that we made along the way, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this video right here. So from that design video, we had all the dimensions of the rig and we had our parts list and we knew that we were gonna need five full length, eight foot two by fours, a 24 by 48 sheet of plywood and a 19 inch piece of hardwood and a bunch of wood screws. In total, the shopping list was $85 and I would be using a used seat that I had around. After picking up my supplies, I did pre-cut a majority of the pieces of wood to length. However, I didn't cut anything that I considered to be a cross brace because I actually want to cut those to size after it's built. And I don't have a table big enough for this project, but my 2x4s were slightly warped as well. So I decided to use my plywood as a semi-flat surface to build the rig. I start by building the main square of the base. This will be made with the two 48 inch pieces giving us our length and these will overlap our two width pieces 21 inches in length that give us our total width of 24 inches. I joined one of the 2x4s to one of the short pieces and then I joined the other 2x4 to the other short piece creating two L's and then I joined them together with wood screws. At this point I was a little concerned about the warp of my 2x4s creating a problem. That square was kind of rocking. So I did something slightly unconventional. I took the plywood sheet and I actually mounted it to the bottom of the square. This held it more square and allowed me to compensate for the warping while building the rest. We'll remove this piece later. I can now flip it over and work on my uprights. The design called for two posts being installed on the right hand side of my rig. And if my measurements were correct, the first 27 inch tall upright would be installed at 21 inches from the front of the chassis. So I check my distance, check my flushness with the two by fours it's being bolted to, and then check my level and bolt it to the rig. Now this particular piece is one of the most important and it did not mount flush due to warp. We will end up changing that piece later. The forward upright goes in to create a 10 inch width for our right side of the wheel deck. After making that measurement, we do the same process, distance, flushness, and finally level before attaching it permanently. On the left hand side, we will mount a 27 inch upright the same way and it will be at the same distance as the forward brace from the left. Distance, flush, level, attached. You can now see the basic shape of a sim chassis starting to take form. Now it's time to cross brace my uprights below the deck. This will also support the deck and the pedals. I have a pre-cut cross brace at 18 inches that will fit between the front pair. It's a little trickier to do because you have to screw it in at an angle and I want this flush with the top of the bottom square to support that deck. After marking the height and shimming it in position, I can start screwing it into place. I have a similar pre-cut piece cut to 19 and a half inches, and this one fits in the same way between the single support and the left-hand side of our square. Again, shim it in place and screw it in. I can now flip it over and remove the deck. But before I do, I draw a line around the uprights. I will be cutting these areas out of the plywood to clear the uprights when I install it on the top. After I make my lines, I take it outside to cut it to shape and then place it down onto the rig, clearing the upright posts. I then screw this plywood down to the two x four square in many places and then also screw it down into the two cross braces that we just installed. I can now put my seat and pedals onto the platform and double check that things are going to work out as planned. Looking good so far. I went ahead and screwed down the back of my seat to hold it in place. This is just two screws 
and right into the back of the deck and into the bottom square. That seat is going nowhere. Now it's time to install the wheel deck or that 19 inch hardwood piece of wood that we bought. Now I had to notch mine slightly to clear one of the upright posts due to warping, but once I did that, we still had to size things up. Before I go screwing it into place, I really want to double check the height and angle of the deck. So I used a combination of wood clamps. I shimmed it with some extra pieces of wood until I got it strong enough to hold my wheel deck in place. Once I had everything where I thought, it was time to actually screw the wheel deck into those uprights, and this is a little more delicate than everything else. So I used a drill bit and I pre-drilled the holes, and I made very certain that I was getting that drill bit right into the center of the hardwood so that when I put the wood screw in later, it would split the wood or miss the wood, it would hold it really well. After finishing the right side, I moved on to the left side and repeated that process once again. Again, I drill a hole, install the screw, and now the entire forward edge of the deck is locked into place. With the front edge mounted, I then braced the deck once again and put my wheel on the deck just to verify that position. In the end, I decided I actually wanted my wheel deck an inch and a half lower. So I removed the screws, redid the front mounting points, and I was extremely careful to go into the exact holes of the hardwood just lowering its mounting point on the two by fours by one and a half inches. Now it's back to checking my angle and distance and preparing to add our screws to lock down this angle. So once everything was perfect, another two pilot holes, another two screws through the front upright, and then some reinforcement screws on the front uprights as well. Looking pretty solid. With the wheel deck fully attached, now it's time to start adding some of the supports to the chassis, but it was also a good time to kind of double check my design. And honestly, it was a little bit stronger front to back than I expected it to be, and a little bit weaker, quite honestly, going left to right than I wanted it to be as well. So I consulted with my friends who are watching the live stream, and Heiko suggested putting a cross brace under the wheel deck going left to right. So I cut a piece from my extra two by four, and smacked it into place with a hammer and added more screws. That one brace tripled our left to right wiggle strength. It also reduced the amount of cross bracing that we will need in the overall design. Now the left hand upright, the single one, is unsupported and that still needs to be done. So I cut a 45 degree angle on one side of a piece that was a little longer than I needed and then I sized it up on the rig to overlap the upright. I made a line to cut it flush on that side. I cut the piece and then screwed it into the base and the upright. At this point, I started to really rethink a lot of the supports for the rig. I mean, this thing is rock solid. So originally I had planned a complete side brace going down the right hand side that would brace the uprights and present a spot to mount a shifter and a handbrake. But rather than just put it in a place now as just a cross brace, I would rather do it in a second stage where I actually measure it, put it where it needs to be for the handbrake and the shifter. That way the design would be just perfect. So with that said, still consulting with our pit crew, we decided it could still benefit from a brace on this side, just a little triangle, just holding the left side of the deck. I used the extra hardwood that I had and I cut a triangle that would support the entire left side of the deck and also tie it into that front upright support. A handful of screws to put it in place and our rig is super solid, sized perfectly and ready for some final work. To make life easy, I grabbed the wheel deck plate from my RC. This had four holes perfectly spaced for the Sim Experience AccuForce wheel. I spaced the plate down on my deck made sure it felt square with my meditative measuring method and centered to my actual seating position and then marked the holes. When it comes to drilling holes for a wheel, you got to love wood because four very easy to drill holes later, we are mounting our wheelbase to the deck. I then double checked my distance for the pedals and when happy, fixed them down with some wood screws as well. Bam, that's a rig. Now, not my original plans, but something I need on all of my sim rigs are caster wheels. So I flipped it on its side one more time and screwed in four casters to the bottom. So that pretty much takes us to a race-ready deathmobile. Uh, 
It ain't pretty. I mean, in fact, it's butt ugly, and we could spend some time painting it or doing some more finishing work to make it look better. But in the essence of a true cheap DIY, it's all finished, 85 bucks and we're done. It's a beast. It's rock solid and it's perfectly built for me, for my shape and for my equipment. On that level, it just doesn't get any better than this. Beyond the perfect geometry that we achieved by building the rig for ourselves and the cheapness that we've done it with, another reason I'm such a huge fan of a wood rig is the ease of adding onto it or making changes later. It just doesn't get easier there as well. For example, I wanted a button box on the rig. Well, that just required two wood screws and finding a location to attach it to the rig. I have a stream deck that I use. It was already mounted to a plate with holes, so two screws later, I had a stream deck on my rig. From start to finish, I spent six hours working on the project, but the actual build time was closer to four hours. Now, if we look at my original drawing, we've actually saved some money because we haven't used some of the pieces that we had planned on using. Probably could have thrown out at least one two by four. Now, I do have plans on adding a shifter and handbrake, but before I do, I wanna turn some laps in the rig. I wanna spend some time, make sure everything is perfect before we start actually adding on to it, but eventually we will get to that. You're just gonna have to wait for another day. We might even get to the point of finishing it and making it look prettier, but you're gonna have to wait for that as well. Now, the next step actually is doing some live testing. If you wanna watch me test this rig live, make sure it's as strong as I think it really is. See how it performs on track under heavy usage, under heavy braking, high, high force feedback. Make sure it really feels good and it really is the geometry that I want. You wanna watch that, tune in to our Twitch channel, Simpit Live on Twitch. We'll be doing all the testing over there. So I hope you've enjoyed our build of Deathmobile 2.0. I'm certainly proud of it. Like I said, she's not pretty, but she's going to get the job done, and she was really cheap. If you want to see more videos like this, you be sure to subscribe to our channel right here. And if you want to see the live testing of this and other rigs, tune in to Simpit Live on Twitch for those. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.